Hey folks, Rob with two guys in a ride and I'm just blown away. We're standing in front of this beautiful 1968 Shelby. This is a Cobra, it's a 428. 428. And 428 and I'm with Bruce and he's gonna introduce himself and his car and tell you a little bit about it. Hi, my name is Bruce and I'm the proud owner of this 1968 Shelby GT500 convertible. Uh, this is a very unique car because of a number of reasons. First of all, in 1968, Carroll Shelby broke the convertible barrier and made his first convertible with a Mustang. 65, 66, 67, if you wanted the Shelby, you were getting a hard top. So in 68, they went with a convertible and they put the sports bar on the back. They didn't call it a roll bar. Sports bar. They called it a sports bar, <laughs> which was interesting. And another interesting feature in 1968, they moved the production of the Shelby from LAX, where they had been building them for years, to Ionia, Michigan. And a lot of reasons for that. Ford probably wanted more control of the process, try to save some, on some costs, so they moved it to Michigan. The 1968 Shelby GT500 has a 428 police interceptor motor. In May, Ford introduced the 428 Cobra Jet, and that immediately went into the GT500, and they call it the GT500KR for King of the Road. Carroll Shelby wanted to use the term King of the Road. Part of the reason he wanted that was because Chevrolet was looking at using it for their Corvette. And Carol's lawyer said, well, Carol, I can get that, that paperwork taken care of you, taken care of for you tomorrow. He said, well, I'll have a new lawyer by tomorrow. <laughs> Carol Shelby got King of the Road that day. The rest is history. King of the Road has continued as an iconic brand associated with Shelby and with Ford and continues to be used in the modern era uh, with Ford Mustangs and Shelby cars today. So it's continued. So we talked about, we did a, a, a quick uh, video of your um, GTO earlier. We talked about how you, you grew up in, uh, in that era. So obviously there weren't a lot of these cars out there, but you knew about this car when you were growing up. And it's one of those that you were, you told me that if I ever could, I would. And well, now you have. Is that the connection you have with it because it's just such a fascinating automobile? It's my connection to it is I, I grew up in the 80s and uh, loved cars. Unfortunately, at the time, Detroit wasn't making a lot of hot cars. Muscle cars were gone. The uh, pollution controls, gas mileage, all huge issues. And Detroit hadn't really kept up on that. So to meet the new mandates, they really had to throttle back on the horsepower. Obviously, all of that's changed now. Detroit's caught up and the cars are faster than ever. But through the 80s, that wasn't the case. And I remember Hot Rod Magazine yep. doing a story on this car, oh. and I loved it. And I thought, this is the car I want to get because there's not going to be a new car that's going to be as fast or as styled as this one. Okay. And they were already starting to be collectible and it wasn't really something in my in my budget at the time and when it became in my budget it, i got it, it showed up in the I garage got it. showed up in the garage <laughs> uh, how they, many years did you uh, when you actually were able to afford it how long did it take you to actually chase one to before you actually found the one you wanted it actually didn't take me too long okay uh, so you had already kind of figured I, out where to go to I, to I, get one when you could afford it. I knew what I wanted. Okay. And I, I knew the auction I wanted to go to to get it. Okay. And there were there were a handful of these, and this caught my attention. It's all original. No rust on it. It's in phenomenal shape. I have done very little to it. Uh, other than a, a few little things that weren't quite sorted correctly. Okay. They now are all sorted correctly. Okay. Or very close to it. All right. A couple little things I'm still working on. Okay. But. Well, that's I, good. You always want to keep there's working There's always on, something. Right? Every, every car in the garage has something that needs to be done to it. <laughs> you ask any one of the collectors and out here. if it here, doesn't, then take it for a drive. By the time you get back, there will be something else. to do something. So, uh, this was, a, was an easy one for me because it, it checked all the boxes of what I wanted. And 
Did, did you have a particular color in, in mind? We were talking earlier, you said this is Wimbledon White and the, the family of colors was available in this car. It they was. didn't have just certain ones that it you was. could get. You could get Metal Lark Yellow, you could get Acapulco Blue. Oh, you, I, there, were, there were a number of, of okay. interesting colors. Okay. But in 1965, when Carroll Shelby first started his partnership with Ford and the Mustang, right. this was the color you could get, it was right. white. Wimbledon White. was white, was yes. all you could get. Okay. So it was kind of a tribute to that. Okay. I was looking for either the white or the I like blue. That. I like it. And this is a striped delete. Right. Uh, and I was not a fan of the stripes on the convertible. Okay. So striped delete, the white color, perfect. I, th I think without the stripes, it allows you to appreciate the lines on the car so much better. Uh, I, I love it. And then the interior is just gorgeous. And Nathan, I know you got pictures of that. We'll show you that as well. But it's an absolutely beautiful car. Bruce, again, thank you so much for sharing your car and sharing your story with My us. My pleasure. Wow, that's all I can say. Wow, this is Shelby. I'm just happy to be standing beside it. I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford it, but I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate that I'm able to be this close and able to share some time with Bruce and find out about his fantastic car. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you. Wow.